Hey there everybody, it's Quasi Tonality coming at you from my new redstone lab. I was watching some uh, mumbo jumbo videos and got inspired and decided to go pro with the redstone. Uh, today I'm just going to show you around the lab and do a quick little showcase of some things I've been working on. Mostly to do with uh, analog circuits, that is uh, to demonstrate what that is. I have this first thing here. Uh, this is, uh, I call it the frame dial because it's controlled by an item frame. You click this, and it... Yeah, you can see what it does. So back here, in the behindings, we have... Uh, you see this comparator feeding through here. The cool thing about comparators is that they give a signal with a strength determining, determined by the state of the thing that's uh, that the comparator is coming out of. So here, the item frame, it depends on the orientation of the uh, item in the frame, which I use an arrow for um, easy visual purposes. Back here, you can see that the stronger the signal is, the more redstone lamps it reaches. This is pretty basic. This is probably the most basic sort of thing that you can build out of, um, out of analog signals. Over here, I thought, uh, I'll just go one beyond this and have just one single redstone lamp lit up, because this is great if I want to, like, determine signal strength for something. By the way, this is obviously, um, not really super useful by itself, but as part of a more complex machine, it could be cool. <laughs> it's a musical device, too. Um, over here... We have the frame selector, and you can see it is quite a bit bigger. It was not as compact as I was hoping it would be, but you can see that it selects only one, um, only one lamp using the frame, hence, hence the name. And back here in the behindings, you can see uh, over here is a similar sort of thing to what we've got on this guy. Um, so you can see that the signal turns off a certain number of torches, but then what we do is we let the signal uh, that's going into there decay by one point, and then feed it into another array of torches. So this torch, hello bat, this torch has uh, one less torch lit than this one, or one more tor torch unlit. Um, and then we take these torches, we invert them, right here, so that now we've got three lit, and the rest unlit, and then we use like a little AND gate, kind of like a, a bitwise AND thing to get a little nerdy, and that leaves us with just one torch lit, and we just pipe that into, into our lamp. Now the funny thing is, I'm using basically, so basically, if you'll let me nerd out for a second, we're uh, bit shifting this uh, signal here over by one bit and then inverting it and then doing a bitwise and so I, <laughs> the funny thing is I didn't even think about this um, in terms of bitwise operations until after I had already built the whole thing uh, and I realized oh that looks that looks like like a thing yeah so anyway oh uh, before we go over there Real quick, this isn't this doesn't have much to do with analog signals, but this is a T flip flop. So basically, we have two hoppers feeding into each other. Um, they're locked, so and they have one item in one of them, and then this comparator reads out of one of the hoppers, and when you press the button, it sends a signal in just long enough and unlocks the hoppers just long enough for them to. Uh, for the item to switch places, which causes the light to turn on or turn off. Down here. So yeah, the thing about redstone, like sometimes things that you would think are simple turn out to be bigger than you think they will be, like with the, like with this frame selector. I don't know, by the way, if anybody knows how to make more compact designs of any of these things, let me know, leave a comment. Um, over here, these things turned out to be relatively simple. This is a signal increase detector. So you can see that this uh, signal 
speeds around here, and so there's more of a delay. So this is the same signal going this way that went that way, but there's more of a delay on this one. And then this one's set to subtract, so of course the signal minus itself um, is zero, so it doesn't normally output anything. But when I press the when I uh, increase the signal, then um, the signal increases, this goes up by one, but it takes longer for the signal to go around to the side, so for like, I think one tick, um, the signal going into the block is stronger. By the way, that means that when it goes up from eight back down to one, it doesn't do anything, because it only works for increases. For decreases, you need the signal decrease detector, which you can see is very similar, but instead of uh, instead of subtracting the signal that well, you can see that I, I just flip flip this one to the right, flip the output to the right, and the uh, older weaker signal takes longer to get there. And the, the other way around. I, I'm not gonna like explain the whole thing right now. I think it's it should be fairly self-evident. Uh, if you want me to do a more in-depth analysis or tutorial with any of these devices, leave a comment. Let me know. Uh, I want to know what you're interested in seeing here, uh, because I'm gonna do more of these redstone videos. I think. Now this um, is a vertical meter, so. A comparator outputs a maximum strength of 15, that is the uh, maximum signal strength for redstone. So this tower is 15 high and it will measure um, output from whatever block we happen to put here. Um, if I switch this to a nighttime detector, it'll give an output. So there we go. And by the way, you can also uh, invert it. Uh, interestingly, nighttime detectors uh, work by light level, but it's uh, inverted. So when light level is at 15, the maximum, uh, skylight level, that is, it uh, outputs a 0. When it's at 4, it outputs an 11. So the output of your nighttime detector is going to be 15 minus the current light level. We can invert that. So over here, we'll put our nighttime detector. Right here, we'll put, oh, I should have grabbed a torch. Um, it, it, it. Oops, uh, nobody saw that here. Uh, we put the torch right there, and we put the comparator right, uh, right here, right? Yeah, and then a bit of redstone, but that's not redstone bit of redstone right here and boom this uh, now gives us the current light level uh, when you do this you got to make sure that your nighttime detector has an eye to the sky uh, because it will give the current light level uh, not of the uh, actual light light that's coming from the Sun or, or the moon but it'll give the light level uh, from the sky at the block that it's at. So if I cover this up, then you'll see it decreases the signal. And back here in the behindings, this was tougher to build than you would think. But I have discovered, I didn't think that uh, if you like pointed a comparator into a block, um, that it would, like the block would transmit the signal strength. I thought that it would just like give a full strength signal back out, but uh, apparently it it does. I've discovered. Uh, so there might be a way to make this a little bit, a little bit more compact. Um, if anybody has a better design than this for a vertical meter, then let me know. And then I was trying to figure out how to get it smaller because the the vertical meter is huge. And the horizontal meter is even worse because it's laying out on the ground, and yeah, it's so it has to be so big. But if you could like output the signal in 
binary code, like where a lit thing is a 1 and an unlit thing is a 0, then you could shrink it down to just 4. Uh, 4 of those. But I was like trying to figure out how to do that. I did figure out a more uh, compact way to um, to uh, build the signal. So it's not all in a straight line, it kind of wraps around here. So I think it's pretty self-evident what this does. Well, it doesn't really do anything. But anyway, um, so I was trying to figure out how to work with binary digits. So this uh, is going to come back to our T flip-flop and how it works. This is a counting machine. <clears throat> it doesn't use analog signals, but I was building it when because I was trying to figure out how to make that smaller. See right there. It, it, it is in base 2. So yeah, if you, well, if you know how to read base 2, then you can see that it is counting up by 1 every time I push the button. Now how this works, and then it rolls back over to 0, how this works is uh, we have a bunch of T flip-flops chained together and I have them color-coded. I promise this machine is not as complicated as it looks. I'm sure there are counting machine tutorials on YouTube, but let me know if you want me to give a full tutorial on how to build this thing. Also, let me know if you know of a better design. So anyway, that is all I have for today. I've got a few other uh, little machines that I've been playing around with, some logic gates, but this is the stuff that I thought would be most interesting. Um, that is my cow farm is um, inspired by a design for a chicken farm that I saw. Um, but I'm not going to cover that today. I'll probably cover that sometime though because I'm going to build it in my survival world. So, that is all for the lab today. I will see you later. Oh yeah, like, subscribe, win, that, that, that sort of thing. Bye.